Hey there, welcome to CNT Collectibles. I am C. Hope you are doing well. We're going to continue on today with the first baseman in our off-season Hall of Fame tracker series. See who, see who may be on the path to eternal relevance or not. The uh, the methodology that we used was explained in the catcher video if you want to go there. But to keep it simple, we start with wins above replacement. See who is on track with some of their peers that are already in the hall. And, uh, and kind of take it from there. So this is a re-upload made of a few mistakes the first time I posted this. So I want to thank those who pointed that out. And I have fired my editor with uh, with prejudice. So um, off we go here. Let's get into some first basemen and see what we see. So in the Hall of Fame, we have 27 first basemen. The average fan graphs war is the primary metric that I use is 67 points. They call it 68. Highest wins above replacement. Belongs to Lou Gehrig at 116. The most hits, Cap Anson, 34-35. Most home runs, Jim Tomey was 612. 3,000 hit club, Cap Anson and Eddie Murray belong to that one. 500 home run club, Tomey, Killer Brew Fox, Thomas McCovey, and the aforementioned Eddie Murray. Terrific Hall of Famer, and his cards are kind of a kind of a steal. So, anyways, Hall of Fame stats for the players inducted by the Baseball Writers Association of America since 1980. Um, players that got them before them, you typically they're not going to be held to today's standards. So this is a little bit closer, but even even then, we're going to have to lighten the uh, lighten the load a little bit or lighten the requirements for a lot of the first basemen today because they're not hitting these numbers, and that makes sense. Average WAR over the uh, over the years has trended lower since the, you know, due to the replacement level players getting getting better. So um, we'll just uh, we'll hold them to a little lesser standard. But um, the, the the benchmarks that we're looking for, see if they can hit. Some of these numbers, uh, the average wins above replacement is 76.85. Average hits, 2,700. Average home runs, 562. Are we even going to see anybody get to 562 as it is? I mean, 500 is going to be kind of a stretch here, but uh, that's how it goes. Uh, average, average number of all-star games, 8.25. Killebrew had uh, 13 himself. Most most players were between kind of that 5 and 7 number there. Average MVP, three-quarters of an MVP per uh, per member on this list of these uh, inductees since 1980. So, Killer. McCovey, Perez, Murray, Thomas, Bagwell, Tommy, and Todd Helton. All right, a couple, uh, a couple things here. Wins above replacement by age. So you can see that first baseman they start to peak around age 23. Start putting up, uh, you know, a, a decent above replacement uh, wins above replacement with the three, and then they start to peak between age 25 and I uh, call it like 30, 32, where they start to average between four and six. And really, six is kind of your peak. 28 years old. And then at age 36, they kind of drop off a cliff. And we've seen that in, in recent years here with Cabrera and Vado and, and uh, things of that nature. A couple of Hall of Famers that did enough early. So that's really the key here. Come up early, produce early. And then in your peak, take advantage of that. And so we're looking for guys that are averaging roughly five wins above replacement. They need to average that for the rest of their career. So they should be able to produce that during their peak if they're a Hall of Famer. And then uh, and then slowly decline um, after that. So we're looking for them to hit about 63 wins above replacement by age 36. And then maybe put up a couple of junk years and you know get to that 65 level. But again, it's more about the awards, I think, these days here and your and your seven-year peak or jaws. So uh, on deck, we got a number. Of, we have a number of players here. It's a little too early. They haven't done a whole lot, so we'll just kind of uh, keep tabs on them and see what we see. Nolan Shanuel, uh up early. Well, that's that's part of the equation. Now he's got to start to produce. Tristan Casas was off to a good start, but he was injured this year. Spencer Torkinson, still young, hasn't done a whole lot, but we do need to see some production. He's produced, uh, you know, basically under a. Uh, under a win above replacement, where the average Hall of Famer at uh, at age 24 has produced 12 wins above replacement. They've had a few years and they've been relatively productive, and so we're not seeing that out of uh, out of some of these young guys. So let's see if they can get going in a little bit here. Uh, Ryan Mountcastle, Alec Baum, a little bit older, starting to produce a little bit, but it's uh, they're they're a little they're they're kind of far behind the curve. So you can you can extrapolate this among a bunch of other players as well. Rizzo, Schwarber. Um, David Bush, uh, Ty France, all that, all that kind of, they're, they're on a similar track here. So uh, probably not uh, terribly relevant for this video here. So let's get into some names that do have a little bit of relevance or a little bit of shot at uh, doing something. And we'll start it off with the polar bear himself, Pete Alonzo. He's 29 years old with 17 fan graphs. War six and a half is needed on an annual basis to get to that 63 by 36. Um, he's diverging from the track here. So it's going to be kind of difficult for him to make that, uh, make that more number. But again, it's an average. So you can come in below that. But uh, we really want to see him get to, you know, at least 60 or just under or do something significant. And that's where he comes in here. He's got four All-Star games, uh, Rookie of the Year, uh, OPS 134. So that's that's kind of what we're looking for out of a Hall of Famer. He just kind of got a late start and then 2020 took uh, some wind out of his sails. But again, he's been diverging since then. 
he and this other guy, Matt Olson, start to they they fall in kind of the same basket here. Again, diverging from the uh, from the path. Age 30, 134 OPS. So again, terrific hitter. And top five MVP, a couple of All Star games, a couple of Gold Gloves, Silver Slugger, but again needs to average you know what you're going to see in a peak year. So that's going to be kind of difficult unless he can throw up a six, seven, eight win season or something like that and, and bring that number down. But what they both have going for them is the pace for 500 home runs. That's going to be their path, I think. That's 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 most likely. So the wins above replacement probably not. Um, are they going to get all the All Star games? Are they going to wind up with eight or ten All Star games? You know who knows? Probably not. But it could happen. But again, we're looking for 500 home runs, and they're trying that pretty well come up a little bit later uh these are the people in the 500 home run club their average performance here so um they came up a little bit later but uh they're they're at least their trajectory is matching what those players have done in annual and an annual basis here so um this is a this is a track for 544 home runs so you can come in just excuse me you can come in just shy of that and uh and still probably get a get a nod for the hall so matt olson's you know 30 years old and he's got 259 home runs. Average Hall of Famer at his age was 312. Beat Alonzo a year younger with 226 home runs. And the average Hall of Famer is 276. So, again, we can come up a little bit shy, but they're going to have to keep up this trajectory. Can they put up some more 40 home run seasons and then uh, then put up a slew of 30-35 and, and get uh, and hit that number? That's that's going to be their ticket, I, I think. So, all right, Cody Bellinger. Uh, needs to average five and a half wins on an annual basis. He's at 20, age 29 over the next seven years to get to that uh, 63, but age 36. So uh, the last few years have, haven't really gone well for him. He started out as well as you could ask with the MVP and a rookie of the year. Uh, three top 10 MVP finishes, but just hasn't done a whole lot the last few years. Showed a little bit of life with the Cubs last year. So let's see if he can get back on track uh, and uh, and reclaim this trajectory here. Now, again, if you're getting close to 60, and you'll see this in a couple of other players here, you don't really need to, to hit the war number as much as you need to hit the awards number. So the MVP will be a, a and the rookie of the year will be a monster tiebreaker, but it's OPS again, below average or not below average Hall of Fame level hitter. So above average hitter overall. Um, but the uh, for the Hall of Fame metrics, a little bit uh, below that average. So we'll see what he can do, but I'm guessing outside looking in. Vlad Guerrero, one of the younger guys on this list, and uh, he's doing what you want him to do. He came up early. He's producing. So he's 25 years old, 17 fan graphs wore to his name. So he needs to average just over four wins above replacement to us uh, to, to maintain this trajectory. And honestly, he's he's just getting to his peak. I mean, that should be uh, that should be a slam dunk ish. So it's, it's about health and see if he can uh, continue doing what he did last year and, and keep that uh, keep that pace up. 137 OPS. Terrific, terrific hitter Four all star games. Top five MVP silver slugger. And a gold glove that will always be a mystery, but I don't think that's uh, that's going to make or break anything for him uh, down the down the road here. But again, excellent trajectory. Last year was a little bit a uh, bit of a, a an off year for him, but he's sure picking up the pace and and making up for it this year. See if he can uh, keep it going. So that's uh, that's all we can do. Just look at it year by year here. Paul Goldschmidt. All right, and this is where we get to some players that the hardware is going to make a difference here. So 56 wins above replacement. Maybe he can put up a, a few more over the next couple of years, but he's uh, definitely slowing down after that monster season, that MVP level season here. So he's got 2,000 hits. That's light. Um, we want to see, I don't think we need to get to 3,000 or even the you know 2,700, but can we get to 23, 2,400? Something that's uh, that's more reasonable of a, of a Hall of Fame level, just sneaking in with over 2,000 hits. There's a few guys that have done that, and it's going to get tricky, but... Again, you're looking at the you know Todd Helton, Fred McGriff, kind of getting the nod. Uh, these are guys without huge WAR totals. Todd Helton um, specifically, but you know it's enough, it's respectable. But the MVP, that's that's where we're looking at here. So this is the big tiebreaker for him, and if, if he's getting in at some point, I'm not sure that it's a first ballot or anything like that. But uh, this will be the t the tiebreaker for him. So four top five, seven All Star games. Again, this is helpful stuff here. Four Gold Gloves and five Silver Sluggers. I uh, think he probably gets in one one thirty nine OPS. So again, think he gets in at some point, largely because if you're on the fence, but you have the MVP award, um, that's that's sure going to go a long way to uh, tilting things in your favor. Joey Votto, never not going to use this picture. Love it. All right, another player that's uh, shy of 60 wins above replacement. 21, 2100 hits. Again, this is light stuff. We're 144 OPS. Everyone knows his uh, his how prolific he was as a hitter and getting on base. So uh, he came up a, a little bit later, but tracked pretty well. But didn't quite get to where you wanted on, on that path. But again, I think you're close enough, especially with that MVP, three top five, six all-star games, and a very well-liked individual in the industry. So that's, that's not going to hurt things at all. No question about it. So again, I think he gets in. Not sure about uh, 
you know, the, the first couple of ballots, but at, at some point when there's a little bit of a slow year, I mean, you've got CC and Ichiro this year. That's going to, that's going to take a lot of, uh, <laughs> that's going to take a lot of uh, energy there. Um, but when you, when you wind up with a, a slow year, then this, uh, he could certainly make a, he certainly has made a, a, a case for himself here. So, uh, Bryce Harper. All right. First base. Is he, I'm guessing his first base from here. But does he go in as a outfielder? Or does he go in as a first baseman? I think he could be bat boy and get himself fit at this point. I don't think it really matters a whole lot. 31 years old, 52 fan graphs war. He's average just a couple of war per season to stay on this path. And I think he uh, uh, can exceed that, especially since he's just 31 years old. So he could be among the best of the best. This is a high-level Hall of Famer, 1,600 hits, 143 OPS. And so, uh, you know, if, if everything went south and he had to retire today, I mean, how does, you know, I think... There would be a discussion about that. What was the manner of it? So, uh, but he's again, he's got five, five or six more years of high-level productivity. So, he's going to put up some pretty incredible numbers, and uh, and uh, it'll be fun to see where that finishes. But he's got a couple of MVPs, eight All-Star games, four Silver Sluggers, and a Rookie of of the Year. So, this is kind of your uh, kind of your no doubt guy. So, you just just coast in there, and uh, I don't think he's even going to do that. He's just he's too good still. So, uh, we'll wrap it up with another no doubter here, and that's Freddie Freeman. So, thirty-four years old, sixty-one. Wins above replacement, and uh, he, can, can he average less than a win a season over the next couple? He's going to be among those those uh, the, the the best first baseman in the game to go into the hall. And if you look at the names that were on the list, Bagwell and Thomas, and and uh, et cetera, he's going to be mentioned among those when it's all said and done here. So he's got a few more years of highly productive ball that should put him you know close to that seventy wins or something like that if he can get upwards of twenty six, twenty seven uh, hits. With over 400 home runs and 142 OPS, that's a, that's a pretty high-level player there. MVP, five top fives, eight All-Star games, Gold Glove, three Silver Sluggers. We don't need to think too hard about that. He's in at uh, at a very early vote. Uh, whenever he decides to uh, to hang it up here. So, all right. Well, that's what I got for you. We'll come back with some second baseman. Appreciate you watching. Thanks for all the support. Um, you know, coming back here and uh, you know a lot of a lot of old friends uh, to popping in to say hi. It's been nice. So, uh, thank you all, and we'll uh, we'll talk to you soon. Have a great weekend, rest of the day. Bye now.